Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're continuing with the first chapter which is physical quantities, units and measurements. Okay, uh, last time we discussed measurement of length, this time we have measurement of time. Right? When we say time, what do you understand by time? It's actually measuring an event, the length or the duration of an event. So what we do is that time is actually measuring events that are repeating itself at regular intervals. For example, um, if you take a year, in a year there are 365 days or you can say 52 weeks in a year or 12 months in a year. Those 12 months or those 52 weeks are repeating again and again. If you look if you look from the starting over the years we didn't have uh, things divided we didn't have time divided in months and years how was time measured at that time they used to measure time according to the seasons because we know they have four seasons summer winter autumn and spring so that repeat itself or even fortnights fortnights is actually 14 days and it is on the basis of the moon the different uh, size or the different size of the moon over the 14 day period so it's a fortnight or it was measured according to the sun you have your sunrise and you have your sunset every day but what issue was occurring is that in this during the whole year the sunrise and sunset the duration is not the same so it cannot be used to measure time accurately similarly the fortnight whatever but then again the duration of the day and night is not regular so what happened was then then they had to uh, fix durations as a result then you had your uh, you had your days and your months and your years come in as well as then you have smaller units of hours minutes seconds and so on Okay, the basic unit or you can say the SI unit used to measure time is seconds and it is a scalar quantity. Like if you remember scalar quantities are those that give only magnitude and no direction. Okay, if we look at the instruments used to measure time. Okay, you have your sundial. A sundial was used initially to measure time. It was depending on the position of the sun. Like where the sun is falling according to the shadow, you they would imagine what is the time. But then again, it's not an accurate way of measure. If it's raining that day, it is cloudy, obviously your sundial will not work properly. Or like in winter, the duration of your day is small, smaller. So how will you measure the time? The nights are longer. Okay, so then you have with this hourglass which was used, but then again it was not very accurate. Okay, the amount of sand and amount of uh, sand falling cannot, could not be kept constant all to them. Similarly, then you have all these other instruments and you have your calendars obviously to measure your days and your years. Okay, then you have the introduction of your watch which was made, uh, everyone knows what a watch looks like, right? You have 24 hours and on the basis of that is divided into hours, minutes and minutes. For smaller calculations, you have your stopwatch. Like if you look over here in the diagram, you have two different stopwatches. You have your analog stopwatch and your digital stopwatch. Now even if you look at your mobile phones, gadgets, all of them have your stopwatches embedded in them with your lap time and all that. Right? So. All these instruments are used to measure time but we look closely at your stopwatch stopwatches are used to measure short time intervals which are used in your labs and are used in experiments when you look at stopwatches you have two types you have your analog stopwatch and you have your digital stopwatch when you look at your analog stopwatch it is somewhat like this okay that's the basic structure of your analog stopwatch if you look closely it's a it's a full dial it starts from zero and goes all the way around and come back to 60 right so you have a start button here you have a reset button and you have a stop button some uh, analog stop charge has only one button in the center here the first time you press it it start you press it again and stop and you press it again it resets okay so it depends the outside one is your minute hand so if you look closely you have your minute hand 
that is 60 minutes in a minute so you have sorry 60 seconds in a minute okay and then you have this smaller one here counts your minutes when the whole thing the big hand goes all the way around once you have your one minute and the hand over here will move once and so on that's how it works okay the accuracy of your stopwatch is plus minus 0.1 second that means the minimum a uh, reading it can have is also 0.1 second not smaller than that when you have a digital stopwatch somewhat like this okay so you have these digits so the first one here is your hours then the other two zeros is your minutes and then the other two are your seconds the last one is one hundredth of a second or you can say point in your seconds right so what the time over here is showing is one minute 23.77 seconds fine some stopwatches don't have your R part they just have minutes seconds that's it normally the one which I use in the labs to perform smaller experiments you don't have the R one you just have minutes seconds and one hundredth of a second okay the accuracy of the digital stopwatch is more it is 0 0.01 second which you can even see with the digits over here it goes to smaller than a second as well Fine. Both these uh, stopwatches are mostly or commonly used for different experiments all over. Now, when you're talking about measuring time, the basic way of measuring time starts with your pendulum. Actually, what happened is your watches, your stopwatches, everything have a set made up of a certain element embedded in it, which vibration of that gives you your time okay so on the basis of that a most simpler one to understand is your pendulum your pendulum looks somewhat like this you have a string a long string to which you have a ball attached it's a metallic ball which is known as a bob okay it's fixed to a support and the movement of this pendulum is used to measure time or you can say it is common the time it moves is exactly the same every time okay so from here to the center of the metal ball is the length of the pendulum which varying the length will vary the time it takes for the pendulum to move you look at it if you start from your extreme position C it and you leave the pendulum it will move straight all the way around to point B and then all the way come back to point C and so on and continuously move like this till eventually it stops a is your main position okay so the to and fro movement of your pendulum like from c going to b and coming back to c is known as an oscillation right and the time taken for one oscillation is known as your time period which is also denoted by capital t as you can see here the unit for measuring time again is seconds because the SI unit is seconds again. Then the number of oscillations in one second measures your frequency. As you can understand the English term frequency means how many times a certain thing is occurring in a certain period of time. So here we consider in one second how many times the pendulum is moving to and fro or how many oscillations are coming in one second will measure your frequency the relationship between frequency and your time period is that it's directly proportional sorry it is inversely proportional to each other that is if your frequency is increased your time period become less if the time period is more the frequency will become less and this relationship is used in as a formula to calculate the different time periods frequency and then in later on when you'll be doing wave it used to find the speed of the wave and so on okay the only factor that affects your time period is the length of the pendulum that means if you increase the length of the pendulum the duration or the time period will increase if you decrease the length it will decrease other than that if you change other factors like if you change the size of the metal ball you make it bigger or smaller it will not affect your time period okay or you use a different string material nothing will affect only only the length of the pendulum affects your time period okay. uh, next we have a certain thing on and vectors remember we when we discuss physical quantities we have scalar quantities and vector quantities 
So now there is a subtopic in your first uh, chapter which has uh, vectors and you have addition of vectors. So uh, in addition of vectors you have parallel vectors and non-parallel vectors. 